in this video we are going to discuss when the cells can die and how they die they can die either when they become badly damaged like uh, they can get infected injured or even poisoned or they can die more of a natural death where the death is important for the normal functioning of the body the death that occurs when they are infected injured or poisoned is known as necrosis while the natural death that occurs uh, due to signals from within the cell or even from outside but where the cell death is a part of process of normal functioning of the body it is known as apoptosis now in layman terms if we use we can say that necrosis is like a cell murder which the body does not want but the cells have become so badly damaged that the cell dies while apoptosis is known as cell suicide where the signal comes from within the cell or from outside but as part of the plan of the body so this is kind of a programmed cell death now in necrosis what happens that cells which have become damaged they swell and rupture so that their contents are released outside and what happens that these contents can actually act on other normal cells and they can cause inflammation however this apoptosis which is cell suicide it is a kind of a silent death where the cell dies virtually unnoticed and the contents are not released into the surroundings so there is no inflammatory reaction and morphologically what happens that the cell shrinks in size instead of swelling in necrosis we saw that the cells swell the cell shrinks in size condenses and starts getting fragmented and forms small small blebs now these blebs start falling off actually apoptosis literally means falling off so cell membrane and its contents fall off as small particles or blebs which are phagocytosed by macrophages so how does this apoptosis occur a cell survival actually depends on growth factors which promote cell survival so for sustenance of life there are certain growth promoting factors now when this growth promoting factors are present it causes cell to survive to divide and to mature but when these factors are not present it will tilt the balance towards death of the cell an example if i tell you that uh, in case of nerve injury we see the atrophy of the muscle also which it supplies so why this is happening is that this nerve when it is intact it releases certain growth factors also which are maintaining the survival of these muscle cells when there is this nerve injury occurs there is automatically this absence of the growth promoting factors for the muscle and it leads to apoptosis so that leads to atrophy of the muscles so this is an example where apoptosis becomes clinically relevant now other way when the cells will die is that the cell may receive a death signal so the absence of the growth promoting factors or the presence of the death signal both may lead to apoptosis now this death signal may come either from inside the cell or from outside the cell the death signal from inside uh, may be needed when there is a cell which is not formed properly or there are certain damages going on inside the cell say suppose the dna is damaged or there is damage of the endoplasmic reticulum or mitochondria any other organelles or there is accumulation of misfolded protein that means that cell is uh, fundamentally functionally uh, not required so that death signal will come from inside the uh, cell from outside the death signal comes when sometimes the cell becomes infected say suppose viral infection is there what happens that cell starts expressing on its surface certain receptors and these receptors are recognized by our immune system so it's an infected cell and it is kind of signaling the immune system to come and uh, give a death signal to me so that i die unnoticed otherwise if i am severely damaged uh, the contents i will release outside and it will cause severe inflammation so this signal is coming from outside that means the immune system now this balance between life and death we can also state in molecular terms now basically this absence of growth promoting factors or the death signal what it does it changes the milieu inside the cell in terms of certain proteins now these proteins are a family of proteins known as pro apoptotic proteins or anti apoptotic proteins 
So if we express this the balance between life and death in molecular terms, we can write it as balance between anti-apoptotic protein concentration inside the cell and pro-apoptotic proteins. So when there is presence of growth promoting factors or absence of death signal, there is more anti-apoptotic proteins in the cell promoting life. On the other hand, if there is absence of growth promoting factors or presence of a death signal, it leads to increase in the pro-apoptotic proteins in the cell. So what are these anti-apoptotic and pro-apoptotic proteins in the cell? Now under anti-apoptotic come two proteins, namely BCL2 and BCLXL. And under pro-apoptotic, there are BAX and BAC proteins. So what do these proteins do? For understanding the function of these proteins, let us consider a schematic diagram of a cell. Now this cell has both anti-apoptotic and pro-apoptotic protein. Now one of the most crucial organelle for apoptosis is mitochondria. So let us take one mitochondria. Right. Now in between the two membranes of mitochondria, there is very important protein cytochrome C. Cytochrome C is a mediator of apoptosis. If cytochrome C enters into the cytosol, apoptosis is going to occur. Now what happens that this BCL2 and BCL XL proteins, they form dimers and they are present on the outer membrane of the mitochondria. Plus this BAX and BAC proteins, they also form dimers and they are also present on the outer membrane of the mitochondria. So green one we are seeing as anti-apoptotic and uh, red ones as pro-apoptotic, the danger ones. Now what happens normally this anti-apoptotic proteins keep this pro-apoptotic proteins under check, right? So they keep these inhibited. Now when they keep them inhibited? Whenever there is presence of growth factors. So growth factors are released by other cells. So these uh, growth factors are present. And then they act on the receptors which are present on the cell membrane. So these growth factors bind to their receptors. Plus certain downstream events cause activation of this BCL2, BCL XL which keeps the pro-apoptotic proteins under check. When these growth factors are absent, you can yourself deduce that this check will be Affected. So we see how the pro-apoptotic proteins are becoming important when growth factors are absent. Second thing which may occur as we have seen earlier that when there is DNA damage or endoplasmic reticular damage, when signal comes from inside, there are certain sensors in the cell. So these sense the damage and the signal comes from inside which again acts on these proteins. This causing decrease in the check on the pro-apoptotic protein. So again, this is intracellular death signal which is coming. So what are the further events which occur? When the check on these pro-apoptotic factors is not present, they form dimers and it is kind of a channel which is inserted on the outer membrane of the mitochondria. Now when this happens, the cytochrome C which is present in between the membranes of the mitochondria leaks out and comes into the cytosol. So as already told that cytochrome C is the triggering factor which causes apoptosis. Now when cytochrome is released, it binds with another protein APAC1. So this complex of cytochrome C and APAC1 now activates certain caspases. Now there are different uh, numbers which are given to different caspases. In case of these signals, that is the absence of the growth factor or the internal death signal, the caspases which activate is caspase 1. Now remember, even though here it is written outside, but actually whatever events are happening, they are happening inside the cell. So these caspases 9 inside the cell, which were uh, previously in inhibited form, they, they are present as pro-caspases, now they become active in as caspases. So basically what has happened? That either the absence of growth factor or presence of intrinsic death signal has led to release of cytochrome C from the mitochondria which has in turn activated caspases 9. Okay, before we spoke about one another death signal that is coming from the outside. Now if a cell has become virus infected then it will express 
certain receptors known as fast receptors. So, on its membrane, it expresses fast receptors. These are recognized by T lymphocytes, which express fast ligand. So, when the fast receptor and fast ligand bind to each other, it activates a sequence of events in the cell, leading to activation of another caspase, not caspase 9, caspase 8. So, there is a mechanism by which there is activation of caspase 9 and there is another mechanism that is when there is an external signal for the activation of caspase 8. So, let us summarize what we have seen till now. There is an extrinsic signal which is due to fast, fast lichen and uh, it leads to activation of caspases A. Now this pathway, the first one, where there is either absence of growth factor or presence of intrinsic death signal, it is known as an intrinsic pathway for activation of apoptosis. While the other pathway is known as extrinsic pathway. Now despite both leading via different uh, mechanisms, different proteins are involved, Ultimately, both lead to activation of a common caspase, caspase 3. This caspase 3 leads to activation of other proteases, nucleases, which ultimately lead to apoptosis. Now, what do these uh, proteases and nucleases do? Proteases cut down various cytoskeletal proteins of the uh, cell, which are maintaining the cell shape, uh, like microtubules, microfilaments, intermediate filaments. And nucleases break down the nucleic acid. So without DNA, the cell cannot survive. And because of these proteases and nucleases, the cell starts forming the blebs, which then fall off from the cell and are recognized by macrophages and mitochondria. Okay, so we have seen that uh, what are the signals for apoptosis and uh, what are the various pathways for apoptosis. But one thing remains that uh, how do these macrophages know that they have to eat these fragments? Now when this apoptosis is occurring, the various changes are occurring, what happens that there is a change in membrane properties also. So these blebs which are forming, uh, one example is that there is a lipid phosphatidyl serine which is present on the cytoplasmic side of the membrane, that is the inner side of the membrane. Now during the process of apoptosis, it flips and co comes to the outer side of the membrane and it is this lipid which is recognized by the macrophages which come and engulf. So, only the death signal is uh, not important. When the cells start dying, it is also important that macrophages eat them very fast. Now, because of this only, even though day in and day out cells are dying, but it is hardly detectable on histology. That means you take any cut section, everywhere in the body cells are dying, but you won't detect these dying cells on histology.